Have you ever pondered the concept of wealth and riches in Christianity? Is it a sin to be rich, or is it how one uses their riches that matters? A question that has echoed through the corridors of time, stirring debate and introspection. It's a fascinating paradox, isn't it? On one hand, the Christian faith encourages diligence, hard work and stewardship, all of which can lead to material prosperity. On the other, it warns against the potential pitfalls of wealth, the dangers of greed and the seductive allure of materialism. So, where does the balance lie? Jesus' teachings on riches and wealth are not as straightforward as one might initially believe. They are layered, nuanced, and subject to a plethora of interpretations. Some argue that Jesus was not against wealth per se, but rather the misuse or abuse of it. Others maintain that he advocated for a life of simplicity and detachment from worldly possessions. Consider the verse from the Gospel of Matthew. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. It's a powerful imagery, isn't it? But what does it truly signify? Is it a condemnation of wealth or a cautionary note on the dangers of misplaced priorities? Then there's the parable of the rich fool, where a wealthy man plans to build bigger barns to store his surplus grain, only to die that very night. Does this parable condemn the accumulation of wealth? Or does it warn against the folly of placing one's trust in material possessions? The interpretation of these teachings has profound implications for how Christians understand their relationship with wealth. It's a complex topic, one that requires thoughtful exploration and understanding. So, let's delve into Jesus' teachings on riches to understand his perspective. Together, let's unravel the rich tapestry of wisdom and insight that these teachings provide. And perhaps, in the process, gain a deeper understanding of the role of wealth in our lives. One of the earliest teachings of Jesus on riches comes from the story of the rich young man. Let's delve into the heart of this tale, which takes place in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 to 24. Here we encounter a wealthy young man who approaches Jesus. He's got a burning question on his mind. What good thing must I do to get eternal life? Jesus replies, why do you ask me about what is good? There's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, Keep the commandments. The young man, perhaps a little perplexed, asks, Which ones? Jesus then lists several. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man confidently proclaims, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? But Jesus, in his timeless wisdom, peers into the heart of the matter. If you want to be perfect, he says, go, sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. The young man's face falls. He's wealthy beyond measure and the idea of giving up his riches leaves him disheartened. He leaves and Jesus turns to his disciples. Truly, I tell you, he says, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus isn't saying that wealth is inherently evil or that the poor are inherently virtuous. Rather, he's warning us of the spiritual dangers that wealth can pose. It can become a barrier, a distraction, an idol that takes precedence over our relationship with God and our fellow humans. Clearly in this early teaching, Jesus warns of the dangers of wealth. As Jesus' teachings evolved, he used parables to communicate his message. The parable of the rich fool is one such example. In the Gospel, according to Luke, a man in the crowd asks Jesus to arbitrate a dispute over an inheritance. But Jesus, seeing the heart of the matter, responds with a cautionary tale. A tale of a wealthy man who, after a bountiful harvest, had more crops than he knew what to do with. This man thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he had an idea. This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? And so, Jesus concludes the parable. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. 
This parable is a stark reminder that life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. The man in the story thought he was securing his future, ensuring a life of ease and pleasure. Yet, in his preoccupation with material wealth, he neglected his spiritual wealth. He stored up treasures for himself, but was not rich toward God. His wealth, his barns full of grain, could not save him when his life was demanded of him. The rich fool is a clear example of the pitfalls of wealth. It warns us of the folly of putting our trust in material possessions and forgetting our spiritual needs. Wealth can provide comfort, yes, but it cannot guarantee life, nor can it buy spiritual fulfillment. This parable further underscores Jesus' warning about the pitfalls of wealth. One of Jesus' most quoted teachings on riches is that the love of money is the root of all evil. This profound statement is found in the first epistle to Timothy, chapter 6, verse 10. It has been interpreted, discussed, and debated over countless centuries, and yet its core message remains as relevant today as it was in the days of the early church. The key to understanding this teaching lies in the distinction between money itself and the love of it. Money, in its essence, is a neutral entity, a tool that can be used for good or ill. It can provide for our needs, fund charities, build hospitals, schools, and other institutions that benefit society. However, it's the love of money, the excessive, all-consuming desire for wealth, that becomes the root of all evil. And why is that? When we allow our love for money to take precedence over our love for our fellow human beings, our moral compass begins to falter. We may become willing to lie, cheat, steal, or even harm others to accumulate more wealth. This is the evil that Jesus warns us about. It's not the possession of money that's problematic, but the obsession with it. This teaching aligns perfectly with Jesus' overall message about wealth. He repeatedly emphasized the importance of compassion, love, and generosity over material possessions. In the Sermon on the Mount, he urged his followers not to store up treasures on earth, but in heaven. He taught that it's more blessed to give than to receive, and he championed the cause of the poor and the marginalized, reminding us that true riches lie not in the abundance of our possessions, but in the quality of our hearts. In the end, Jesus' teaching on the love of money serves as a powerful reminder that our focus should be on cultivating virtues like kindness, empathy, and generosity, rather than amassing wealth. This teaching makes it clear that our attitude towards money is what truly matters. Having explored Jesus' teachings on riches, what can we conclude? It seems clear that Jesus had a lot to say about wealth. Firstly, he warned of the dangers of wealth. The story of the rich young man illustrates this perfectly. This man, who had followed all the commandments, was still unable to let go of his earthly riches to follow Jesus. The love of wealth, it seems, can act as a stumbling block on the path to spiritual growth. It can ensnare us, making us believe that our security and happiness lie in material possessions. Secondly, Jesus taught about the folly of storing up earthly treasures. In the parable of the rich fool, a man who had accumulated much wealth thought he could sit back, relax and eat, drink and be merry. Yet his life was required of him that very night. All his hoarded wealth was of no use to him. This parable cautions us against an overemphasis on material wealth at the expense of cultivating spiritual riches. Finally, Jesus addressed the problem with the love of money. In his teachings, he referred to money as a potential master suggesting that it can dominate our lives if we're not careful. This doesn't mean that money is inherently evil or that having wealth is wrong. Rather, it's the love of money, the obsession with it, the reliance on it for our security and identity that is problematic. In essence, Jesus' teachings on wealth challenge us to a radical re-evaluation of our attitudes towards money and possessions. They prompt us to question our priorities, our values and our sources of security. They invite us to live differently, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, trusting that all our needs will be met. Ultimately, according to Jesus, it is not wealth itself that is the issue, but our relationship with it. It's a reminder to all of us to evaluate our own attitudes towards wealth. 